Hello and welcome. This is Buy or Sell coming to you from the No Holds Bar here at Equity Mates HQ. I'm your host, Adam Kiley, regarded by many as one of the simplest minds in finance. Luckily for all of us, I'm joined by an expert to educate me and hopefully you on how they're thinking about stocks and the stocks they're thinking about. Uh, this is rapid fire though. This is buy or sell. We're going to rip through as many stocks as we can in the time that we have. And don't forget, you can follow each stock on the buy or sell tracker on the Equity Mates website. And today I am pleased to be welcoming back to the No Holds Bar, Andrew Page, founder and managing director at strawman.com. Nice to see you again, Andrew. Hi, Adam. How are you going? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, Andrew, from memory, you're a gin and tonic man, is that correct? I think that was your pick last time we were on the show. I am rather partial to a G&T, yes. (laughs) A little bit of lemon or lime. Very good. Perfect. So our our signature cocktail this week, especially for you, is the Profit Mar Gin and Tonic. Oh, Uh, love it. (laughs) <laughs> uh, it's, we're coming into the end of summer now. Is, is this a, a gin and tonic through the winter type thing, Andrew? Is it a, is it a year round beverage for you? I've never heard of seasonality with cocktails, but I <laughs> I'm a simple man. I I'm a year round, you know. <laughs> Cocktails seasonally adjusted, not a yeah, thing. Exactly. A thing <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, very good. Uh, hey, we had you on, I think it was the end of October last year, and you gave us 10 stocks almost five months ago. Uh, probably not what we'd recommend in terms of a long investment horizon, <laughs> but uh, we are going to take a look back at your predictions this week. So we're going to go through the same 10 stocks that you gave us last time. Uh, we're going to see how they're tracking and get an updated call from you for each one. Mm-hmm. Before we start, though, I will say across the board, you're up 21.92% uh, hey. according, to the, according to the tracker on the Equity Mates website. So that's pretty handy work. Well, so what you, what you do is the tip, tip for young <laughs> players is when yeah. you're in this game, you might want to make lots of predictions, lots right. and lots and lots, uh, mm-hmm. law of large numbers, some of them will stick. And yep. when they stick, you, you scream from the rooftops about how, how much of a genius you were in picking it. <laughs> Had it been five months later and was like, oh, yep. everything's down, I would be yeah. I would be um, giving you a lecture on long-term uh, right, time yeah, horizons yeah. Stay the, and stay the volatility course. and underlying. All those. <laughs> but as it turns out, I was like, yeah, I'm a genius, obviously. <laughs> Clearly. I totally uh, knew that was going to happen. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'm going to put a pin in the word genius and bring that back to you a few times throughout as we look uh, at these at these stocks. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, other thing. You don't talk about the losers, Adam. Yeah, right, you talk you. about the okay. winners. Yeah. In that case, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about six stocks today on uh, <laughs> by yourself. Well, Peter no, Lynch no. said. Peter Lynch said, mm. love, author of One Up on Wall Street, great fund manager. Yep. If you write six times out of ten, you're good in this business. So I'm going to lean into Perfect. that. I'm leaning into Perfect. that. <laughs> love it. All right, let's get started. We're going to kick off with Laser Bond Limited, ASX LBL. You called it a buy at 88 cents, currently 71 cents. Uh, Laser Bond announced a $1 million technology sale agreement with Curtin Uni. They're down almost 20%. Andrew, is it time to go back to school on Laser Bond? Buy or sell? No, and this is, it's buy still. I mean, nothing's right. changed. Okay. Nothing's really, right. uh, you've got to ask yourself I, I, a little bit. I know it's pressed for time, but this will cover all of the 10 stocks. Is that yep. I was right or wrong because of what happened in a five month time, right? It's, it's madness. Yeah, so, yeah. so why did yeah, I buy yeah. this thing? If we go back to the episode, it's like, he's a company with a lot of inside ownership, very long record of value creation for uh, shareholders. They had a, yep. they had um, some uh, issues in the half, uh, supply chain uh, factors impacting their products division, some revenue recognition delays, and, you know, that – and there was a, a, a an acquisition all in there as well. Yeah. I mean, but really, when you stand back, anyone who's run a business, like there's always – there's t- there's two types of problems. There's the cyclical problem or there is the outside factor problem, and then there's the problem because there is a cancer within. There is a structural issue with the business. So the way right. I would frame the answer to this and to any anyone is just sort of like what I'm trying to, to gauge when I revisit my stocks is what was the thesis? And as we said last time, write it down so I remember what yeah. it was. Like why did I yeah. like this thing? Why did I think it was good value? And then what's changed? And so mm-hmm. it's a long run up to answer your question, what yeah. has changed? And I would say nothing, um, right. nothing significantly, mm-hmm. nothing structurally. What does the five-year outlook look like? Well, exactly the same as it did before, in fact. Yeah. And and now shares are cheaper. So, 
Yeah. Right. Bye. It's a bye. Bye. Um, is this? It, would you typically go back about at, around this time frame, or you, you sort of you you bought like let's say you bought five months ago, mm-hmm. you're looking at it again now, you're looking at it again in a year, two years, or kind of just continually watching it? How does your process work? Now? I'd say continually, but don't don't conjure up the image of me sitting in front of six screens, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, like that's with a hundred <laughs> charts on it. Like what I- Just, what just I, matrix style yeah. green screen floating down past your eyeballs. Yeah, I mean, imagine. if ever there was a bigger red flag as to someone who <laughs> doesn't know what they're doing, it's like six screens, six screen trading setup. Um, uh, you know, like Buffett didn't even have a computer. I don't even think he does have a computer now. Anyway, it's it's, yeah, it's right. all a little bit rubbish. So you get, well, depending on the size of the company, you might even get um, sort of fundamental updates every quarter. But for most companies, yeah, yeah. it's sort of every half. So I was like, well, I own, I own a part of this business. I'm going to see what happened. What are they re- yeah. reported? When I mean yeah. continually is not watching the ticker every second of the day, but it's just like, I don't know. It could be a three Thursdays from today, and Laserbond releases a market sensitive announcement. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to read yeah. it, whether it's six months or six <laughs> weeks or six minutes since I bought it. Right? No, nope, I'm not ready to read it yet. No, that I'll, I'll I, read. I'll read that in six months. I said six months, and six yeah. months is what it's going to be. So whenever new information, um, whenever new information comes out, now part of that might be the pr- maybe nothing's changed and the price has dropped fifty yeah. percent or doubled or something like that. So you might put that new information in context with the underlying value and like you know. Is, is it better or worse value? But you want to try and keep a, a, an interested eye on it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, so Laser Bond is a buy. Hell yeah. Next up, we're looking at Enviro Suite Limited, ASX, EVS. You called it a buy at six cents, currently trading at six cents. <laughs> uh, it did hit 10 cents in January. And yeah. as you know, Andrew, yeah. I am plugged right into wastemanagementreview.com today. <laughs> and after the initial hype, hasn't been a, hasn't been a single article on Enviro Suite. Uh, buy or sell for you for Enviro Suite? Still oh, for sense. my sins, it's still a buy. Like anyone who's listened to me for a while, this has been. I got to tell, like this is. I've done so well on Enviro Suite over the years. Yeah. Um, I think I first bought it around four sort of cents and wrote yeah. it up, sold some down. And you just, it's a business that is making headway fundamentally. Uh, and the market goes from way too pessimistic to way too optimistic. So I'm not trying to trade right. it, but sometimes it's just clearly better value than it, it, um, than at other times. Yeah. I think it's one of these times now where it's sort of like it's been disappointing. I'll get to the reasons why, but I still think it's fundamentally cheap. Now, I've made that yep. point for a while. So anyone wants to take everything I say here with a big grain of salt. <laughs> but the trouble with them has been it's it's they're growing, right? Yeah. But they're not growing to the pace that we would like them to grow. And they're right. not... They are not swinging to cash flow positivity and 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 net profit net profitability as quick. It's all on track, right? It's yep. all on track. But I just I think if I, I would lie to you if I said I thought it would take this long. I thought things would accelerate sooner. That being right. said, I still think balance of po- po- probabilities. I still think it's a bigger business in five years time, and that we'll look back at at six cents and go, yeah, that was pretty good value. Think about it this way: even if it is ten cent, you know. Like yeah. It was in January, right? So it went from six to ten to six. Think about that in percentage terms, right? Like that is, yeah, yeah. If, if it's if it takes five years to get to ten cents, the compounded annual return on that is respectable. I mean, I, I'd hope yeah. it's more, but it's respectable. And so I, I think yeah. you've got a low bar at this point in time. And I'm not just plucking those numbers out of the air. Like I think yeah, you sure. can ground them to expected earnings and cash flows. I think I think it's reasonably priced. All right, Enviro Suite is a buy. Next up, we're looking at Catapult Group International, ASX, C-A-T. Uh, you called it a buy at $0.92, cents, currently $1.24. It's up 34.78%. Uh, Catapult Group quite literally climbing to the top of the ASX charts. Uh, since we talked about it, I have noted, and I don't know if this is just one of those things when you're thinking about buying a new uh, Mitsubishi, you see Mitsubishis everywhere. But since we talked about Catapult, I've been seeing Catapult everywhere. I saw the Indian cricket team yeah. had Catapult. The only thing I would say about Catapult is I think they're on the wrong side of the shirts. So most companies like to get their branding and logo on the outside of the shirt. Yeah. You, t- you kind of have to look through the like the, the white of the Indian cricket team's cricket whites to see that faint Catapult logo underneath, but it's there. So yeah. Yeah. Um, they're doing something right, but I think well, they're uh, not maybe selling to a consumers. marketing move. 
They're not selling to. Right, that's fair. You yeah, know, okay. so you've got, this is this. They are, spell, are selling to the leagues and to the teams themselves. Yeah. So obviously they would get more, but then it's a question of do we want to spend this sponsorship money on this? You know, yeah. so it's it's an interesting yeah, one. Yeah. I often yeah. think it's uh, when I see ads for BHP and things like that, like. Who are you advertising to, right? Like, <laughs> I'm not in the market for iron ore. I don't know who is. And then you realize. Just after a Bunnings ad for a shovel. Yeah. Or, you know? <laughs> get your shovel at Bunnings and then go get some go get some iron ore. 4,000 yeah, tons of coal, coffee. please. Yeah. Or, you know, like, or copper, whatever. It's crazy. But then you realize um, it's all PR. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. In, look, in Catapult's case, this is a really good example, actually, of a, of mm. a disappointing investment for me because i've i've bought right. some way back 10 years plus 50 cents and it's it's yeah. something i've again done reasonably well out of but it has been it is it has failed to grow to the extent that i initially expected so i think it's still cheap it's still a buy it's still cheap yeah. still a buy okay yep. yep all right the next one we're going to look at is stealth global holdings asx sgi you called it a buy at 16 cents currently 26 cents the name sounds like an oxymoron stealth global we're everywhere <laughs> and nowhere <laughs> no hiding the gains though andrew up 62 percent uh since you since we had you last on the show mm. uh where are we at with stealth global so they're just delivering as expected. Mm. The, the, what's interesting about this is you've got a business who is just, it's so small, especially when we were talking about it, right? And it still is. It's a tight, it's not even a small yeah. cap, it's micro cap, yeah. very liquid kind of company. But it's kind of like, it, it's hiding in plain sight in terms of you just look at what they're doing, what the management really? say they're going to, and have been, you know, rolling out. They're execu executing on their strategy really well. The results yeah. are now starting to come through. You know, and and what's what I love about the the very small space is if you've got a long enough time horizon, you see two things. If you get the thesis right, you see the business perform as expected, and you get the growth that accompanies the growth in the share price that accompanies the growth in the business. But yeah. as it gets bigger, it tends to get more liquid. It tends to come onto the radar of bigger players. Some boutique fund managers look at it, gets into a you know maybe into an index or two, and as it go, then you get yeah. this re rate. So a, a tiny little liquid micro cap that might trade at eight times earnings gets into mm -hmm. the ASX two hundred in ten years. This is what happened with Prometicus, right? And you know um, Ordinate and you, you know Zero and all these smallerish right. ones yeah, that yeah. sort of as they ran up, the growth in earnings coupled with the growth in multiple as they gain that sort of um, demand from from bigger money. And 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 I for me this is like. It's, I'm really happy with the with the gain, but yeah, it's still it's still cheap. I, I, I intend to have this for for ten years unless something goes wrong. Uh, this, yeah. this will be multiple right. dollars, I think, by the year twenty thirty four. You know, I, right? I, yeah, but like like any micro cap, like we, we'd be chatting in another five months, and it's at twelve cents again. But yeah, the north yeah, right. the north star here is: can they continue to grow? Their revenue as 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 expected, and can they yep. widen those margins, which they have been doing? If those two things happen, then this is a steal. Yep. All right. Stealth Global is still a buy. Uh, next up, the last one before we take a quick break, uh, Andrew, and this is a big one, Drone Shield Limited, ASX, DRO, you called it at 26 cents, currently trading at 63 cents, up 142%, if you don't mind. It, it got uh, to 93 I oh, did it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. <laughs> we should have just scheduled this a couple of weeks earlier. <laughs> uh, still, that's pretty handy, 142%. I'm really interested, interested on this one. Um, with those kind of gains, are we looking at selling at the moment? This is a tough one because I feel as though this has got a bit of a meme stock aura about it. Right. It's a cool yep. story, right? You've got these big yeah, electromagnetic yeah. guns that look look like they're out of a science fiction movie. Mm. There's a lot of bad things happening in the world where there's a bit of a tailwind for the, the, their kind of uh, product. You know, you and and I feel as though there's a lot of hot money has gotten onto this thing. Yeah. And it's a yep. it's a it's a great dilemma. These are good kind of dilemmas you want in the market, but it's a dilemma because you think, well gosh, when we were chatting and it was what 26 or whatever cents it was, yeah. it was cheap. Well, now it's 3x that. Is it still mm. cheap? Um, and it's a dilemma because you would think definitionally, it's well, it's not. It's 3x more expensive. But what can really mm. throw you here is that thing, pr share prices can go up and businesses can get cheaper because the yeah. fundamentals just backfill it in, you know? And um, 
So Dr- Drone Shield has been assisted by some very good news, some very good results. There's a very big sales pipeline. There's a reason why we thought it was cheap and why it, it's, yeah. it's gone up. But it has it has got that element to it of like, whoa, okay, right. maybe things are running a bit too fast. So what do you do? So you, you might go, okay, well, I'll take some profit. That's nice. Things are a bit hot. And I'll yeah. just wait for it to get back in and I'll, I'll, I'll back lower and then I'll get back in. You might yeah. not ever get that chance. A lot of people, I mentioned ProMedicus before because it's just such an easy example, but there's a hundred like right. it, right? So yeah, yeah. you can be too fussy and too clever by half with valuations. At the same time, things start to get harder and harder to justify. And here's another great yeah. problem to have, Adam. You think, I like Drone Shield. I'm going to put 5% of my portfolio in it. And you wake up one yeah. day and it's like, oh, now it's, now no, not only is it 20% of my portfolio, um, all else sort of being equal, maybe a few yeah, things yeah. have gone down or you know moved around a little bit. But the valuation proposition isn't as good, so I've got a larger weighting on a on a yeah. less uh, attractively priced stock. So right. this, I would say, if you're a long term holder and that's why you bought it, nothing has really changed. Mm-hmm. In fact, the story has continued to improve. I'd probably just hang on to it, um, yeah. uh, knowing that it's going to be an incredibly volatile ride. So I yeah. would would I be putting fresh money to it? Probably not at this point okay. in time. So let's go with a hold, a middle, a middle let's of go the road. With a hold. Yeah. The other thing I think I would do is post in Reddit and just get a sense of the Reddit vibe around drone shield. Um, yep. I think that that's where that's, that's another, that, that's my tip, Andrew, as, as not an expert, yep. uh, obviously, but I think uh, just, just worth, worth a post. Just a uh, quick, just a quick temperature check in Reddit to see how we're feeling about Drone Shield. The indicator you want to look for is how many rocket emojis are being employed <laughs> exactly. in any post. The exactly more right. rocket emojis, yeah. the more you yeah. need to worry. No, I, th- I think we're on the same page, Andrew. Yep. Absolutely, yep. excellent. All right, hey, let's take a break here. We'll grab another G and T. Look, if you've got a stock you want to hear about on the show, uh, then why not let me know? Uh, use the contact form at equitymates.com. You can leave a voice message. You might even hear yourself on the show uh, or flick us an email, contact at equitymates.com. Uh, we'll be right back after these short messages. Welcome back. You're listening to Buy or Sell with me, Adam Kiley, and I'm joined by Andrew Page, founder and managing director at strawman.com, and we are in the No Holds Bar. We're drinking gin and tonics Uh, And we are going through the stocks that Andrew gave us uh, about five months ago now, just to see where we're at, take a little uh, little check in. Uh, And we're going to kick off again with Alcidian Group, Andrew, Alcidian Mm. Group Limited, ASX, ALC. And we've had a lot of success in the first half of the show. This one, (laughs) not so much. (laughs) When you're right 51% Uh, of the time, you're wrong 49% of the time. (laughs) Uh, You called them a buy buy at 10 cents. They are currently at 5 cents, so down 50%. Uh, These guys are in health data, right? Mm. Can we all just get healthier? Is that what happens (laughs) here? We just don't need. Uh, The quick version here is that they they provide software largely for hospitals and large health organisations, and the major client for them and the big lever of growth for them in recent years has been the NHS over in the UK. And so sales going really well, uh, everything was on track. And of course, you're dealing with these very large bureaucratic institutions. I don't know if you've been following political and economic developments in the UK, but you know, things are tight. Oh, watching it like, watching it like a hawk. Oh, mate, as you, you do. Know, everyone, over, yeah. everyone does. <laughs> um, and so and so they've just had a whole bunch of contract delays. And right, okay. it, it is so here's here's the two narratives. Choose your own adventure. Mm-hmm. One, management um, got ahead of themselves. They ramped up costs too much when it should have been apparent that these sales weren't going to come through. It was, it was poorly managed. And not only that, that this isn't just a temporary one-off kind of thing, but there is a real structural shift in the underlying demand for this. The other narrative yep. is, is that, well, we're a tiny little Australian ASX company that's mm. uh, dealing with a counterparty that's very slow to move. That's got massive budgetary constraints. We've still got the work. You know, we've still got yeah. a huge amount of recurring revenue. We've still got a massive amount of opportunity. It, not yeah. just us, but everyone in the sector pretty much has had the exact same impact. So it's it'd be different if they were singled out and yet every other supplier mm. to the NHS was going great, but it's just been bad across the board. In other words, and now they're, you know, they're reining in their costs a little bit. We, we actually uh, interviewed the um, CEO, Kate Quirk, last week. And yeah. that was, her take was, you know, take it with, for, for whatever it was worth, but- we just got, we just had everything delay on us. But 
Uh, right. In terms of the three to four or five plus year outlook, nothing's changed whatsoever. So if okay. if you think that's the case, then this is this is this is the market mm. giving you a gift. If you think there is something structurally wrong, no, uh, you want to yeah. you want to pass. I'm in the camp of uh, I think that, that they are still okay, and I, I think All the right. risk reward proposition is actually a little bit better. But it's a controversial take. I know a lot of people on Strongman mm. don't like it, but but I think okay. it's well- interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to choose that you're just making excuses. Yes. Um, yes. So. That's sandbagged that one to all hell. <laughs> well, can, else, can I just group. iterate yeah. on that? I mean, this was this yeah, is sure. a point I was trying to make with catapult, and I'm not trying to say this yeah. would be catapult, but if yeah. you're if you're only excited, and enthusiastic about your investment when the share price is up, you're going yeah, to miss yeah. opp- potential opportunities like this. When everyone's yeah. negative, that's when I get more interested. It doesn't mean I'm right, but that's when I think yeah. you should be more interested, not less interested. Okay. Very good. All right, next up, we're looking at Drop Suite Limited, ASX DSE. You called it a buy at 25 cents, currently trading at 30 cents. Uh, more sweets than a lolly shop on this show. We had Enviro Suite, <laughs> now Drop Suite. Uh, if you bought into this one, you might very well soon be in the penthouse suite, <laughs> Andrew, up up 20%. Uh, is, this, is Drop Suite a buy for you still? Uh, my brain's not quick enough to come up with another suite. <laughs> Uh, suffix. Um, uh, Another sweet gag. I, I, I just go sweet. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is this is this business just keeps on delivering. It's like yeah. every time, every six months when you open up their presentation, there's just a there's just a page and page and page of bottom left to top right charts. Like choose right. your metric. They're all going in the yeah. right direction. Okay. A little bit of fear. Hey, great example, right? A bit of fear crept into this stock last year. Uh, yeah. You know, um, uh, gone blank now. Microsoft had their own sort of um, backup sort of product that they were coming right. to market. We were like, oh, this is the end for, for Drop Suite, not recognizing the model that they employ and the reality of sort of um, uh, protecting data in large institutions. You, you tend mm. to sort of want to use a third party, not the same party that you're using for all of your enterprise it's good, stuff. It's good point. You know, yeah. like, anyway, yeah. but it, and, and, and just by virtue of the fact that it's massively underpenetrated, very large and massively underpenetrated market. So people tend to think that as soon as there's competition, everything's all over, whereas yeah, most yeah. companies operate in a competitive environment. So I think that was yeah. overblown and that was yeah. an opportunity. And I really like Sharif. Really like Sharif, the CEO. He's, he's big inside ownership. Really, yeah. really well uh, disciplined operator. I like it. Still a buy. Jumbo Interactive Limited, ASX JIN. You called it a buy at thirteen dollars sixty. Currently seventeen dollars sixty nine. Andrew, as they say, go big or go home. We're going <laughs> jumbo. Uh, I'm a bit conflicted about this one though. Uh, it's it seems like a gambling company, but it also seems like uh, like a it's it's doing it for a good cause. It's a fundraising company as well. So, uh, which is it? I mean, they're definitely a gambling company. Well, they're, they're, they're <laughs> okay. They're, good. All right. They're in it. They, they're, 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 most of their money comes from reselling tickets. Right. Right. Okay. And 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 their tickets in a lottery. It, it is literally a lottery. <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, it's gambling. You can't pretend right. otherwise. Very good. If you're having, if you're trying, if you're ethically trying to wrestle with that, I, I we spoke to mm. the CEO uh, uh, not long ago, and it, the thing you've got to remember is that the when you look at d- damage done in society through gambling, and you draw mm. it on a pie chart, it's like eighty percent pokies, right? Yeah, yeah. It's hard yeah. to be a problem gambler with a lottery ticket. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't right. sort of double down and all of these other kinds of things. So it's sort of, um, mm. look, I'm not, I'm not sure. Tr- I'm just trying to enable those that might be having <laughs> any kind of issue. You make your own mind up. It's a very personal yeah, sure. kind of thing. The other thing they do is software that enables other companies yeah. to run run um, lotteries. And, yeah. and what's interesting here with this business, I think, is that you've got a scenario where if you look at the lottery sector, that you've got this hardcore group of people who buy just buy a ticket every week. And then you got the other people who are just like, I don't do anything except every, when I see in the bus shelter there's a 100 million Powerball and then I, I yeah, yeah, me yeah. and my mates all go in. And so when My you chances see- of winning 100 million are better than winning. <laughs> apparently. That's why, apparently. I, that's why I only enter $100 million draws. It's yeah. a thing. It's a thing. And so yeah, people yeah. actually track this. They look at the companies. Like look at the lotto jackpots. When you have a run of high jackpots, they sell, yeah. off, they sell heaps of tickets and they get yeah, a clip yeah. on and all of that kind of stuff. So that's yeah. going to be volatile, but it's interesting because we will get to a point where there's just a bad, like math, just 
statistics, maths, right? You're going to get a bad run of low jackpot sort of things. Sales aren't yeah. going to be as good. The market's probably going to, you know, overreact to that kind of stuff. But I, I still think it's good. The thing to watch here is like, you know, oh, I forget now, it's seven years, six years from now, they've got to renegotiate their licensing agreement with Tabcorp, who's now called the lottery company. Um, yep. And and they, it's very likely that they will probably reduce the commission that they get on or increase the fee in some kind of way. But Jumbo has got an alternate source of revenues. So I, I really like the I really like the founder. So okay. yeah, still a buy. Still, still a buy. buy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Next we uh we're talking risk. Ava Risk Group, ASX AVA, you called it a buy at 19 cents, currently 16 cents. So we're <laughs> down about down about 16%. Uh three cents we're down, Adam. It's only three, three. cents. <laughs> What are you talking, what's this percent thing that you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> three cents, good. what's yeah. that? It's nothing. It's nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing at all. Uh, all right, down three cents, uh, buy or sell for you, Ava, Ava Risk Group. Uh, again, this is like, I've put this in the Enviro Suite category. This has been, I've been very bullish on this for a long time, like yeah. a couple of years at least. And it, they they have this incredible product and it's, it's and they've had a change in leadership and it just hasn't got the traction that I would have hoped that it had. There are okay. signs. There are signs yeah. there, right? So it's sort of like this is, I feel like, a gradually than suddenly kind of company. So you develop this mm. tech over a long period of time. You've repositioned the product set under a new CEO. You're out there and you're selling it. They announced this massive, well, I mean, I shouldn't choose my words, a, a contract with Telstra to use their fiber optic cable and, and provide all the, it, it sort of measures the integrity of the network, et cetera, et cetera. And there was no financials around that. It was an IR dog's breakfast in terms of the investor relations piece of them releasing, yeah. like the, the ISX like said, please explain, there's no financials here. And they, they tried to, you know, the shares went into suspension. It was just very messy, very poor shareholder communication. But yeah. putting that aside, it's still a very decent yep. return, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, that's yep. uh, not more, right. more sandbags. Yeah. <laughs> very good. So Ava Risk Group is still a buy. All right, it is time for the last call here in the, I've got to tell you, it's the newly refurbished No Holds Bar. Uh, if you want to check it out, have a look at us on YouTube. Yeah, uh, But good. it is time. It is time for the last call uh, here. And we're looking at Bailador Technology Investments, ASX, BTI. You called it a buy at $1.16. It's up to a dollar thirty-three, up fourteen percent. Uh, as they say in the company, if you don't believe in what we're doing, then there's the bailer door. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, we like we like a big finish here in uh, No Holds Bar. I Andrew. love it. Uh, bailer door, buy or sell. I'll go with buy. I'll keep it short because I've run over. It's it's okay. it's big big discount to its NTA still. A huge part of that NTA is in cash, and they're good at capital yep. allocator, so it's a buy. It's a buy. All yep. right, don't let the bailer door hit you on the way out. <laughs> uh, very good, uh, Andrew. That's it. Thank you so much uh, for joining me again. It's been an absolute pleasure having you back. Always fine, Adam. Thank you so much. Yeah, awesome. Uh, you can continue the journey on the Equity Mates website. There's plenty of resources there. You'll find the buy or sell tracker uh, where you can see how all of Andrew's stocks have been performing. Uh, you, you can also use the Find a Company page where you can find out more information about all the stocks that we're talking about uh, on the show. Uh, thank you for joining us. Don't forget, uh, you can find us, as I mentioned, on YouTube as well. Uh, I hope you'll join me next time in the No Holds Bar. Until then, it is bye for now.